for y'all to see. As long as y'all, y'all can see it, it look good to y'all. All right. Okay, perfect, perfect. So why are house lords important? Well, when we come down here, all right, when we come down here, we, we needed some motherfucking direction at times. We, we needed some guidance at times. And that's exactly what the house lords do. We don't call them house lords, house rulers for no reason, guys. It, they're that powerful, okay? So the function of a house lord is to provide spiritual direction. How do we how do we receive this direction? Natural feelings and thoughts and emotions and certain random circumstances and and things that we may uh you know random experiences in our life. You feel me? Sometimes a house lord could just manifest a conversation for you with a friend for you to kind of realize something. But when it comes to every house in our chart, aka every area of our life. There's always going to be certain natural feelings and thoughts that we have in these areas of what to do in this house. There's always going to be an intuitive feel on a certain thing we should probably be gravitating towards. There's going to be somebody that says something that brings some shit up here. There's going to be a relationship that manifests to teach us this lesson to understand how to deal with this house here. Now, if we want to prevent a lot of these extra ass situations in these houses and we just want to find out how to where, how do I grow in this house? What area do I go to to bring success, bring expansion, to bring growth to this house? The house lord. And it's that simple. The house lord. All right. That's why the ruler is that important. Because wherever the ruler is at, it's bringing everything that it's experiencing in another area to this house. So when you understand your house lords, and I'm going to go through, well, excuse me. We're talking about the seventh house lord. I almost got, I just put posted a video on Patreon breaking down the house lords for each house, breaking down what the first house lord mean, what the second house lord mean, what the third house lord mean. All right. So we're not about to talk about that. We're about to talk about the seventh house lord, but I'm just telling you how house lords work in the first place. So um, is this whole sign or tropical? Now, I don't, I don't mess with whole signs, Ivy. What's going on, Ivy? Nice to see you in the building. The sacral empress in the building. All right. All right. So. Um, that's what house lords do. They provide direction and, uh, how do we calculate the house lord? All we simply have to do for everybody that's confused. All right. For everybody that's confused. Hold on. I might have to flip Instagram. Now, Instagram, I'm sorry. Y'all going, it's too much. It's too much right now. Y'all going to have to jump on YouTube if y'all want to see this, but all right, guys, this is just, this is the natural energies for today. This is nobody's chart, but it, this is set up like a chart, right? So. We want to find the house lord for the first house, right? So we look here right now. The, the ascendant is zero degrees Leo right now. So if this was a person, this person's uh, house ruler would be the sun because the sun rules Leo. So it don't matter that this is originally the Aries house. It don't matter that Mars is home here. None of that matters. If you don't have Aries or Mars, anything in here, then that don't matter. Yes, the first house is the natural house that the Aries constellation was birthed out of. Yes, the first house is the home of Mars, but that's everybody's first house is not Aries. Every, we all have different rising signs, all right? So we simply calculate the ruler of a house by looking at the house cusp, the, the whatever sign that cusp lands on, the planetary ruler become, I mean, the ruler of that sign becomes the uh, house lord, all right? Now, for example, since I just I'm looking at this first house right now, for example, when we look at the first house, you need to know the first house lord is your chart ruler. So this planet rules your whole chart. So this planet needs to be in a healthy state. You know, when this planet is not in a healthy state, we could learn some of our craziest, craziest motherfucking lessons, you know, when that planet is, is imbalanced into some point of degree. And, it, and these issues can trickle into any house, not just your first house. All right. What else do we know about the first house lord? This is going to be where your personality creates opportunities for you. So you see how it's, we got the sun in the fifth house right here. All right. Let's say this is the actual person. This Leo Risen's personality, creativity, personal endeavors, personal outlook in the world, their personal interests, even how they motherfucking personally, how they dress and shit. That shit is going to be received 110% in the fifth house. 
whenever they're on the stage, whenever they're on camera, whenever they're putting themselves in a position to deal with creative self-expression, dealing with childlike activity, when they have fun, when they go out, when they socialize, their personality shines the brightest here. So this is why I say, guys, there's so many different ways to manifest career in the chart. There's so many different ways to manifest career in the chart because people simply fall into shit in career based off their first house, Lord. You, you end up being in an environment where your personality is received very well, and then that end up creating an opportunity for you in some type of shape or form. Now your first house lord is doing a lot. Your first house lord is creating opportunities for you in career. You barely scratch the surface with your second, sixth, and tenth house lord. So things work in many different ways. But when it comes into activating things, if career, if career ain't naturally pan out like that for you and you want to get active, you want to take initiative – then there's certain houses we'd like to look at with the house lords. Then after that, we look at the second, sixth, and the tenth household. You got to look at your earth house lords. This is how you create your, and I've talked about this a whole lot. This is how you create your career, spiritual, your, your spiritual career formula here. This is one of the most simple yet effective and powerful ways to look at career through the chart. You want to look at that second, sixth, and tenth household, but we're not talking about that. We just talk about the seventh house lord, right? So, um, let me go back. Let me go back. So, guys. That's the importance of the house lord, all right? And um, that's how you locate the house lord. So you could do this for every house. You could do this for every house. You know, different house, different houses have different functions, but at the end of the day, the base function of the house lord is to bring expansion to that house, is to bring growth into this house, is to help you to spiritually expand in this house, and it's providing solutions in this house. So if I have a problem in my first house, if I have a problem in my personal life, I got to know where that first house Lord in, in my chart is at. Cause that's where the solutions be at. If I have a problem in my fourth house, in my home, if I have a problem dealing with some form of fuck, some, something that impacted my subconscious, right? Something dealing with the home environment, something dealing with my relatives. I need to know where my fourth house Lord is at to make some sense and find some solutions and answers. Right? So when we get into the seventh house Lord, now we could get to the meats and potatoes of your relationship life, all right? Now you can get to the meats and potatoes of what the fuck is going on in your relationships. Because because this is the thing. As of right now, y'all know I'm currently doing the Signs Through the Houses series on YouTube, all right? I'm taking eight years to get the shit done because I'm a scattered-ass lucky Libra, and part of my karma down here is personal self-organization. And apparently, I ain't doing too good of a job, so bear with me, y'all. We all got different lessons. But as y'all see me go through the Signs Through the Houses series, all right? When it comes into um yeah, plastic is Ivy. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> so when it comes into um uh what the fuck was I saying? Um yeah, when I, when y'all see me talk about the signs through the houses, the signs through the houses are breaking down what you're receiving in this house, it's not what you're pushing out. Is what you're receiving and what manifests into characteristics. So if somebody has Scorpio in their fourth house and they're dealing with a lot of transformation in their fourth house, they're dealing with they they might have dealt with some death and they got in their fourth house at a young age and shit, lost some family members. By the time they're 18, they already know what death is like based off in their home environment. They they moved a lot or whatever. This starts to create characteristics of how this person may deal with the fourth house. Now they may be real isolated in the fourth house. It may be real hard for them to connect to people or let somebody in in the fourth house because they feel like they, they lose people in the fourth house. So this person didn't start off like that. It's just that that's how this sign influenced this environment in which every sign has its pros, its positive and negatives. If you want to understand these things some more, y'all go on my YouTube, all right? Uh, we up to the ninth house. I got to get, I'm going to get that shit done this week, man. I got you. I got you. I can count on me. All right. But all jokes aside, it don't matter what house we're looking at. All right. The signs is what you're experiencing there. Okay. But when we get into the house, Lord, when you get into the house, Lord, that's getting way deeper into what's really going on in that house. So the signs of the house series is really general. It's really general, y'all. OK, and not saying general is not truth, not saying general is not reality. I'm just saying general because the house Lord is taking us all the way to the root foundation of what's really going on in the house. You feel me? So it gets way deeper when we get into the house Lords. This is how we're able to identify things way deeper in the chart. All right. So 
when we get into the seventh house, okay, there's a couple of things we need to clear up before I start going through the seventh house, Lord, through the houses. Okay. For one, it's it's the the planet that's ruling this house matters. All right, regardless of where it's at, just the planet that's ruling this house. Okay. So if you have Mars ruling over yours, you, you need to know the planet, the relationship the ruler has with the house. So the house, let's say your seventh house ruler is Mars and you got Mars in a nice place, a place that Mars likes to be. And you got Mars in, in uh, let's say you a Taurus rising, Scorpio in your fucking seventh house. Mars is ruling your seventh house and you got Mars in Aries. Where would Aries be? Around the 12th house, right? You got Mars in Aries in the 12th house. So shit, your motherfucker look at that like, oh, that's a nice Mars placement. You know, it's at home, it's down the third. But at the end of the day, Mars don't like the seventh house. So even if your Mars is in a healthy space, you still have to take into the consideration Mars don't really bang with the seventh house like that. AKA the plant that rules your seventh house, you have to anticipate experiencing them energies in your seventh house, even if it's not in there. All right, so let me briefly go through that. If you have the sun ruling over your seventh house, this is Aquarius risings, all right? There's Aquarius rising because you'll be uh you have Leo in the seventh house. So with the sun ruling over your seventh house, one thing about the seventh house ruler is th these are energies your ass play out in relationships and also what you attract in relationships. So when you got Leo in the seventh house, motherfuckers be a lot of time wanting the attention on them in the relationships. A lot of your partners want to be validated. You know, a lot of the time you feel like uh you know, you go through clashes in your uh, relationship just simply because you don't feel like you need that attention all the time, but your partner does. So when you, the fact you don't feel like you need it, you have to learn to give your partner that at times. You got to learn that's the shit people really like as an Aquarius rising. You feel me? And then your partner doesn't have to be a Leo. This is another thing. Before I start getting deep into that, this is another thing. Because a lot of y'all was asking me, oh, Boro, I got Pisces in my 7,000. Does that mean I'm a, my husband, my whatever is going to be a Pisces? Hell the fuck no. Nah. Hell no. Nah. Hell no. Nah. If it was that simple, we'd all astrologers be rich right now. It ain't that simple, y'all. Okay? What you will experience is Pisces. If you have Pisces in the seventh house, you will experience a lot of relationships in your life having a Pisces temperament to them. So you may have to swim through a lot of illusions in your relationships at times. You may deal with emotionally unstable motherfuckers at times. You may manifest a lot of relationships that take you to La La Land at times. So you have an extra charming, you be meeting extra charming, elegant, alluring motherfuckers. You can't even look in their eyes and shit. Because once you look in their eyes, nobody could hear, nobody gonna hear from you in three weeks. Your ass is smoking, drinking, eating, half fucking with them in a whole nother world for three weeks. Pisces, Pisces in the seventh house, this is what Virgo Rises be going through. This is what Virgo Rises be going through. Shout out to all my Virgo rises. Motherfuckers be taking y'all for a trip in that seventh house. <laughs> hey, yo. All right. So the Pisces, so you're going to attract the, the traits and the tendencies and, and, uh, and your relationships going to have Pisces energy in it. When you, the seventh house is not just your intimate relationships. You know, this also has the influence on dealing with, you know, business agreements, the shit dealing with law, shit dealing with anything with a fucking contract. So even if you got Pisces in seven house Virgo rising, you can't just be so uh so la 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 when it comes to, to signing a contract, when it comes into you know establishing a business relationship with somebody, you can't be too up up in the air here, you know, because motherfuckers will try to you know blind you, throw an illusion at you, you know. Then when it's time for you to get paid, you're like, wait, what the fuck? What the fuck going on here? Now you gotta get on your bullshit. Now Virgo rising gotta get on a serial killer shit. So that Virgo in the first house, Pisces and stuff, that shit ain't no joke. The Virgos be killing niggas with this shit. All right. Pisces, man. Pisces, y'all be talking about... Y'all be talking about air signs. Uh, y'all be trying to talk about how air signs be kiki and kaka and, and 